School is out in the third week of October in Denmark, and many people go abroad for the week or head to Copenhagen for a few days. With traveling still being somewhat uncertain, we opted for Copenhagen. It's much closer, if not exactly cheaper. It's always interesting to visit, and we'd packed a full program. My daughter felt it was a bit of a tradition to go to Tivoli with her friend, because we went last year. So we spent the first day there, in the pouring rain. But if we let a bit of rain stop us, we'd never get out of the house in this country. Instead, we don our rain gear and bring umbrellas. Tivoli was established in 1843 and is the second oldest amusement park in the world, the oldest being Dürerhausbagen, which is also in Denmark, just north of Copenhagen. About 30% of the visitors are foreigners, mainly from Sweden and the United States. It's totally unlike most of the other amusement parks I've been in, and many people who live in Copenhagen come to simply go for a walk in there sometimes, or to have a meal in one of the restaurants. It's like a park, with rides. I used to love all the rides, but those days are more or less over. I feel nauseous just looking at some of them. Instead, I walked around appreciating all the beautiful Halloween decorations. Tivoli is located in the very center of Copenhagen, right next to the train station, and you can hear the clock strike the hour from the nearby city hall. We had a coffee break there to dry off, and then the two teenagers were off again. The plus about being there in the rain was that they didn't have to stand in line as much. Right about then, I met someone I know. Every time we're here, one of us meets someone we know, which tells us something about the size of Denmark. On the other hand, it may just tell us that we all go to the same places. I once met a guy from Finland in New Delhi in India. A month later, I met him in Mumbai, another huge city, over a thousand kilometers away. In the afternoon, it cleared up and the crowds came pouring in. I still feel a bit self-conscious about filming in public, especially if it's crowded and especially if I'm filming myself. I feel like people eye me suspiciously. I didn't want to stop my family too much and as I haven't completely gotten on board with the whole selfie culture, it meant I got very few shots with me in them. The girls went off on their own, and we walked around until our feet were sore. Last year they had a haunted graveyard here, but they had gone for a more mellow take on Halloween this year. Halloween is a relatively recent event in Denmark, by the way, because we've had, and to some extent still have, our own version of dressing up called Festelang, which is celebrated in February, traditionally right before a long fast. But Halloween has become more popular in recent years, of course, due to the influence of American media. We met up at an Italian restaurant the minute they opened the doors. By the time we exited Tivoli, it was getting dark and we were feeling cold and tired, not to mention wet, my shoes at least. <laughs> Thank you. 
We walked down the pedestrian zone that runs through the center of town until we reached our hotel, exhausted. The next day we passed the Royal Palace on our way to the metro station at the Marble Church. It was almost freakishly quiet and empty there, but also extremely clean. Yes, they did. We were heading for another park that isn't exactly or only a park, but a cemetery which seemed only fitting apropos of Halloween. More specifically, I had dragged my family out there to take in two particular graves and to put off shopping for just a bit longer. The cemetery is called Assistenzkirchen and is located in a part of the city called Nørrebro. The cemetery is the final resting place for a number of famous Danes, including the philosopher Søren Kierkegaard and the writer and poet Hans Christian Andersen. I have wanted to see their graves for years, plus I quite like cemeteries. We spent a long time looking for their graves, and it turned out that Kierkegaard's grave was being renovated, so we could only take in the graves of his family. It's a bit of a jungle here, literally. On our way to Hans Christian Andersen's grave, we passed by the grave of Natasha, a Danish singer who died much too young in Jamaica some years ago. We walked from Nørrebro to the city center, passing a few vintage shops along the way, which the two teenagers simply had to enter. It reminded me of back when I took the train or bus to Copenhagen to buy most of my clothes in second-hand shops. These days I leave it mostly to the teenagers. I tried to remember to look up at all the interesting or beautiful buildings that we passed, because I heard someone say years ago that when people walk in cities, they mostly look at things that are at eye level. Shops, people, cars, etc. and forget to look up. There's surprisingly many tourists over here, and according to one of the guys that I talked to at the hotel yesterday, the tourists are completely back in Copenhagen because many people are vaccinated here. Someone asked in a comment to another video of mine that takes place in the countryside where all the people are. Well, here. This is where they are. We had a late lunch at one of our favorite restaurants in Copenhagen, Rishras which makes Middle Eastern vegetarian food and which has surprisingly reasonable prices for Copenhagen. As much as I enjoy the vibe and the architecture, the different cafes and weird shops in the city, I began to feel a kind of sensory overload at this point. My eyes and ears were filled to the brim with lots of impressions and I needed to recharge my batteries again. 
We dragged ourselves to the train station and practically fell onto the train, completely exhausted after having walked 20,000 steps that day, about 14 kilometers. The train tickets cost a fortune, but we were relieved to even get them, as they were the last ones with seats for that train, and the next two departures were completely sold out. So long, Copenhagen. Till next time. <laughs>